gray granite Wright Brothers Monument rising out of the sandy, wind-wracked wastes at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, marks the birthplace of powered flight. Aviation has traveled fast and far in the eventful years since the moment of Orville Wright's first flight in 1903. From then to now, the history of aviation has been a record of magnificent achievement. America, first to conquer the air, has given wings to the world. Old eyes can only marvel at new jets streaking man at supersonic speeds on his skyward course. The Wright brothers, Wilbur and Orville, they were first. First to master the invisible sea of swirls and currents, which seemed determined to batter down anything that tried to fly. Their story began, however, far from Kitty Hawk in Dayton, Ohio, where they had lived since boyhood. Here, the Wrights, without even a high school education, were first gripped with the dream of building a machine that would fly. Daily, Orville and Wilbur were seen striding briskly along Hawthorne Street to and from their white frame house. Poring over every available book on the theory of flight, they lived in this typical turn-of-the-century American home. Its simple, modest setting reflected their tastes, revealing clues to the character of the two shy, obscure brothers. Yet in less than a decade of study and experiment, they were to solve a mystery which had challenged man for centuries. Down the street from their house was the Wright Cycle Company, where they sold, repaired, and later manufactured their own bicycles. Here, too, the brothers, who already had made hundreds of successful glider flights, built the world's first airplane. Night after night, they labored in their crude laboratory. When the odd little machine was finished, they went to barren, lonely Kitty Hawk to see if it would fly. The Wright brothers' hangar and workshop have been rebuilt in authentic detail. Inside, tools hang as they did a half century ago, and neatly arranged too is their combination kitchen, pantry, and dining room. A boulder marks the spot where a man first flew. An early vintage airplane recalls that historic moment during the golden anniversary celebration of flight at Kitty Hawk. Billy Parker, one of America's pioneer airmen, prepares to take off in the sky flivver he built in 1915 and has been flying ever since. A relic of the past takes us back 50 years. Orville Wright was but 32 and his brother Wilbur had left 36 when in 12 airborne seconds at Kitty Hawk, they changed the course of human history. Here, Wilbur readies their plane for a takeoff. No movie cameraman filmed the epic first flight of this homemade machine with its 12 horsepower engine. These pictures were made a short time later. Theodore Roosevelt, in a precarious perch beside the pilot, became the first president to fly. The old Rough Rider's enthusiastic reaction converted many skeptics to aviation. Soon water was being used for takeoffs and landings as the first seaplanes took to the sky. America's foremost aviatrix was Ruth Law, one of seven U.S. women pilots licensed before World War I. Her aerial exploits electrified the country in an era when the ladies did not even have the right to vote. With the increasing use of aircraft, factories began turning them out in large numbers. World War I accelerated man's conquest of the air. Combat planes had to be speedy and sturdy to survive in dogfights with the enemy. The first airmail service was an important development during the last year of the war. Army pilots flew the initial route from New York to Philadelphia and Washington. In 1919, Navy flying boats blazed an aerial trail across the Atlantic, starting a series of flights which were to change man's concepts of time and space. Billy Mitchell, a prophet before his time, believed bomb-carrying planes could sink naval ships. In 1921, he arranged an amazing demonstration of air power. Army planes dumped their bombs on obsolete battleships. Mortally wounded, one of the ships slid out of sight. 
The first naval vessel sunk from the air. The others followed soon after. Billy Mitchell was right. Commander Richard E. Byrd and Floyd Bennett launched a new era of geographical discovery with their first great polar exploration flight in 1926. Leaving Kings Bay, Spitsbergen in a tri-motor transport, the two aerial adventurers flew to the North Pole, now below, and back in 16 hours. Many others were to follow the sky trails of the first man to fly over both the North Pole and the South Pole, Admiral Byrd. Charles Lindbergh, seen with his mother, undertook aviation's most memorable flight in 1927. Ordering out his plane on a chilly May morning, the young airmail pilot announced his intention of flying from New York to Paris alone. With the spirit of St. Louis groaning under a tremendous fuel load, he barely cleared the power lines at the edge of the field. An excited throng surged over Le Bourget Airport in Paris, wildly cheering America's lone eagle. He had completed his historic 3,600-mile flight in 34 hours. On his return to America, New York gave Lindy a welcome that has never been equaled in the city's history. Amid a blizzard of ticker tape, New Yorkers poured out their admiration and affection for a quiet hero whose solo flight led the way for the thousands of routine crossings that were to follow. This day, the world belonged to Lucky Lindy. In 1928, Sir Hubert Wilkins soared over the top of the world on the first transarctic flight from Alaska to Spitsbergen. A reception committee awaited them, Eskimo youngsters. The late 20s produced the endurance flyers. Although refueling in midair was a hazardous task, some of them managed to remain aloft for weeks. Amelia Earhart, Proving women could match men in skill and daring, crossed the Atlantic alone in 1932. As they had Lindbergh, New Yorkers took Lady Lindy to their hearts. Wiley Post, too, after completing the first solo flight around the world, received the city's acclaim. World War II proved the military importance of air power. While aviation had played a minor role in 1918, supremacy in the skies was to become the key to allied victory. Wave after wave of bombers roared across the channel, battling on their way the enemy aircraft that darted after them like deadly wasps. Rumbling on, the giant ships dropped their cargoes of devastation. gave birth to low-level bombers. Winging over the ramparts of fortress Europe and on across the countryside, they droned relentlessly toward their targets. In both Europe and the Pacific, Allied airmen punished the opposition with precision from in close. clock, the bombers carried out their dangerous missions, crippling the Axis nerve centers, proving in the garish glare of bursting bombs that the airplane, as a weapon of destruction, was awesomely effective. With war's end, propeller-driven aircraft yielded to jet-powered planes. Restless man had found a revolutionary new means of streaking still faster, higher, and farther. Inside a B-29, one day in 1953, Captain Charles Yeager, first man to break through the sound barrier, slid into a rocket-powered XS-1 snuggled against the mother plane. Dropping away under its own power, the skyrocket is soon plunging earthward at almost 1,400 miles an hour, twice the speed of sound, a world record. Refueled four times in flight, a B-50 has circled the globe non-stop. 
The Azores were first, Saudi Arabia next, and the Philippines third. A final refueling over Hawaii, then home again to Fort Worth. In an ever-shrinking world, the newest jet aircraft, like those used during the Korean War, are graphic evidence of the ambition, skill, and high courage with which man has pursued his journey toward the stars. Yes, we have come far since the Wright brothers' first flight at Kitty Hawk. Yet the future holds still many new challenges. Where now? What next in man's conquest of the skies?